Hello, hello, it's Webzy Wongi. Um, I'm going to talk about something that is really, it's kind of personal to me. But I want to see if anyway it can be of help. Um, as hard as it is to talk about it, I would like to share it with those of you who, who don't know a lot about me, who are new to my channel, those who don't really know my story and where I come from and what I've been through. Um, cause I've been wanting to talk about my experiences that I've gone through just a lot of the healing process when it comes to cheating and when it comes to cheating, I previously in my previous marriage of four years, I was married to a guy. Uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details. Um, but when I was in my ex marriage, um, I cheated on my partner. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I've gone through a lot of healing from that time and period. Um, this year alone, um, uh, the beginning of this year, my fiance had a dream that really woke me up, really really got to me because he had a dream that he cheated um, with an employer at work and it, it really still gets to me because I know in reality it's not true I know he's committed to me I know he loves me but it's a really hard thing to go through if you've been on the other side of the stick um, and made a mistake of cheating um, in a prior marriage. And I know a lot of people, and I've mentioned, I think this a few times on my channel, is a lot of people criticize those who have cheated as once they're a cheater, always a cheater. But they never really get in kind of the depths of those who've been affected by cheating and who's done cheating in either a relationship, partnership, marriage, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, the ins and outs of what that person's journey looks like and what that person goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's been really hard for me to even talk about this in depth. And I know I think I made a previous video about it. Of the things that I deal with on a regular basis and just this year alone, you know, coming to a place where I, I needed employment and the hardest choice I had to make so far is working at an old place that I used to work at, but in a different state, um, is at the pizza place, Little Caesars. And it gets really, it really gets hard for me because I feel like on a daily basis, the struggles that I go through, the depression that I go through, the anxiety that I go through. And a lot of people will look at my situation, those who know me and know my stories and what I've gone through and know that, you know, it, it was valid. I'm not saying cheating is valid, but in my situation, you know, there was no love, there was no affection. It wasn't a real marriage to begin with. And it, it, it's had a toll on me mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, me personally, the reason why I felt the need to cheat is, and it's not an excuse to cheat on anyone. You know, cheating is cheating, cheating is wrong, cheating and it hurts people in the long run and it hurts the person who's been through it. And it's like here lately, I feel like I've been facing my inner demons, my inner conflicts. And it's getting to the point where it's really hard to interact with anybody of the opposite sex because of my past experience. And, you know, some people from the outside, I feel like are looking at me like I'm the one who did my ex wrong and I feel like a lot of people pass judgment on me on a daily basis because they look at me as I did a wrong thing by betraying his trust by 
you know, committing the act of sin in a marriage that a lot of people look at as sin, but they don't realize or understand what I went through and they don't know my story. So when you hear stories of people cheating, automatically we assume that something's wrong in the marriage, that maybe the two partners has a miscommunication, maybe they're not intimate, or maybe they lost the spark. And I'm here to tell you when it comes to the cheater's perspective, there's so many things that a lot of people don't really understand. And I know there's people who keep doing the same thing over and over. They never learn the lessons. But for me, I have learned the lesson. I have grieved over it. I have wept over it. I have truly come to terms with it. But at the same time, it, it's like a crippling depression, a crippling effect that I've had since the very act of doing it. And, you know... I still feel remorse about it. I still regret. And, you know, it, it still hurts today talking about it, coming to terms with it, because there's a part of me that wishes my ex-in-laws could understand the pain that I went through in the marriage, could understand from my perspective that I wasn't being showed as love that love is supposed to be shown and you know I'm not excusing my behavior but I'm saying they don't know the depth depression I went through they don't know that I saved myself for this man and you know I'm not criticizing him at all because it's like I've been through that but it's like I'm just sharing my story and seeing if some way somehow it could help someone who's been through it to understand the cheater's perspective and to understand, you know, both sides of the story. There's more to the story, but I feel like it hurts to know that my ex-in-laws, after it all happened, years has passed. You know, it's been, it's been ever since 2013. And this month, you know, it's another... <sighs> It's another grieving process for me to have to look at what I've done. And, you know, I wasn't in the right mind frame. I was in the right space of time when I, you know, did what I did or thought at the moment, you know, I'm just going to screw all my restrictions and be a rebel and do what I want and cheat. Because I wasn't getting the love. I wasn't getting the attention I needed. And like I said, it's not an excuse just because you're treated indifferent in a marriage to cheat on your spouse. You know, there's no excuse in the book to do that. But I felt like at the time it was right for me to do that. Um, but it still breaks my heart that, you know, the last thing my ex-mother-in-law said to me was, you know, I wish you all the luck in the world. Because, you know, I was leaving my ex-husband, getting a divorce, blah, blah, blah. But I never had any of them come to me and discuss, you know, what happened on your side of the end. But I felt like they looked at him as a good person and they realized, oh, I'm the one who did wrong. But to realize that it takes two people, two people that aren't on the same page, aren't on the same level of communication... It takes two people for a marriage to end. You know, it's not just one-sided. And I just feel like and I wish someday they can come to terms with talking to me about what really went wrong in the marriage. But I feel like they're going to take his side because they're that's their son. That's their brother. That's their uh, family member. But they never came to me. And that's the part that still hurts and still stings a wound. Because I looked at these people as family, as people that I can go to and talk to when I'm struggling in life. But the way they are, just to give an update, an idea of what type of people they are. They're very nice people, but they're very private people. And one of my problems in my previous marriage, when I was with this man, is the fact that I did wrong by telling my sisters that there was no 
sex in the marriage. There was no intimacy. There was no affection. And I got blamed for going to them. When I was literally feel like I was literally dying inside not to tell anyone. And like for me on my side of them, I didn't want to hurt people in the process of this. And yes, I had the wrong intentions to do what I did. And I own up to the responsibility of my action and how it caused a lot of problems, especially in the church I was connected with. But to me, I got blamed for telling and reaching out to the people I felt comfortable telling, you know, my sisters. And they were shocked because I saved myself for this man. You know, and ending up finding out, you know, a month into the relationship that he didn't want sex. And it really hurt me tremendously. And I know I hurt him tremendously. So I'm not, the, I'm not just the good person here. You know, we both hurt each other and hurt people hurt people. Um, but the biggest dilemma here is that I've never had any of his family members come forward and say my side of the things or never even wanted to hear the side of the story. You know, and it just really hurts. It hurts so much that it, it, it brings me down sometimes, you know, in these dark depressions. I'm going to close with this, but just here lately, you know, I feel like the struggles are real, you know, that it's really hard to interact. And it's like, for anybody that knows me, you know, it, it's really hard to interact with the opposite sex, especially if I have friends that are males, because it's not that I don't want to talk to them. It's not that I don't want to be friends with them and buddy, buddy. And it's like, it's helping me understand things that you know we're all we're all connected to people on many different levels but learning how to communicate to people of the opposite sex and realize that just because i'm their friend or just because i feel a close connection or a friendship or bond or a family bond you know doesn't mean there has to be anything physical or intimacy where it's like you want to you know do the wrong thing and have sex with them or something but it's like it's a struggle because here recently you know i a few situations i came across where it's like i had to work with guys and it really it was really hard to talk to them it was really hard to open up and be vulnerable again at that point where it's like yeah you want to talk to them you want to get to know people but at the same time you don't want to get too close because you don't want to make the wrong choices in life. And, you know, I know there's a lot to my story. A lot of people don't understand and the struggles I go through. And it's like, if you ever want to ask like in depth about like what I went through in my story, you know, just ask me, you know, don't be afraid to ask. But I just feel like, you know, I got to, I got to get that out that, you know, I still struggle on so many levels of depression, a lot of people think, you know, what's wrong with you? Or, you know, why are you going through this or that? And it's like, there's a lot of reasons why I'm depressed. There's a lot of reasons why it seems like I can't seem to find a middle ground to like the way I feel a lot of times. And it's like, when I love people, I love people deeply. And, you know, I, I'm not there just to, you know, hurt people it's not who I am it's just a lot of times I feel like when we're in these bad situations we react in a certain way because we're hurt because we're dealing with depression because we're dealing with things that a lot of people don't freely act because I feel like in society we teach people to hide their emotions especially their true feelings and they don't want to come up about it they don't or they're taught to be private about things but what would have been the story be like if I went to his sister instead of my family? You know, would that in some way change the story that, you know, I'm hurting here 
and your brother's not showing me any love or an affection where well, they just blow me off but that's what I wonder too if I did things differently and I went to them would that change anything differently to where I am now and I feel like everything happens for a reason whether it's you know cheating on your partner or you cheating on them or vice versa or just a breakup in a marriage or a relationship is that everything happens in life the way it's supposed to you know everything has a di divine timing to it of course so it's like it, it's still a struggle in itself so I just wanted to briefly share my story of see if it can help anyone that has gone through either cheating experience or they've been the cheater and you know your story behind of how you deal with the things that you deal with me personally and I was going to close with this I promise there's not one way to necessarily deal with the pain of causing pain like cheating on someone to get through the day all you all you really have to do is just do the best you can and try not to focus too much on what has happened in the past and use that to transcend the darkness that you feel inside or the pain you feel inside and really use it to help others. Anyways, thank you for hearing me out. Bye-bye.